Hello, we are Vas Katsionis because this is Billy Vas and I'm Bob Katsionis from Greece. So let's talk, uh, let's talk progressive metal, right? A little bit about this interview, sure. Okay. Well, uh, basically, um, I didn't know what to do with my heavy metal band Terra Incognita, and uh, I was at a crossroads. And that's when I came up with the idea to, uh, um, to come up with uh, some kind of a solo project for myself. And uh, basically, Bob turned it around and said, you know what, why don't we just go and do what we've been talking about doing for such a long time, which is a 90s uh, progressive metal album, something like that. Yes, I mean, it doesn't have to do that there is the Matthäus Arts. Um, this is a pure coincidence. <laughs> it's just the Vascationis album which uh, sounds like uh, <laughs> like the things we like. Exactly. Like, uh, yeah, 90s prog metal uh, in the vein of Fate's Warning, Conception, Queen Jones, Queen, uh, yeah, Dream Queen. Theater, all those kind of uh, 90s metal bands. And uh, we figured we'd put something together. And that's how the first album came out. Ethical Dilemma, but now we're talking about the second album, Cynical Silence. Uh, personally, uh, of course, Ethical Dilemma was a huge success as, as far as uh, the people that I've been in contact with have told me through Messenger, through emails, of course, through um, uh, the heavy metal TV shows that we've been on and uh, interviews that we've done and, of course, the album reviews. Um, everything was uh, pretty much high, high standards. Um, everybody who loves progressive metal music really, really uh, was able to touch base with Ethical Dilemma. I think it was strange and a happy surprise that uh, we found it among the top 10 lists in a, very, in a lot of uh, magazines, right? A lot of magazines. Yeah. A lot of magazines have had posted the, uh, the album like in, uh, in, in, the top, in their top 10 uh, best albums of uh, the year. 22, right? Last year, yes. that's when it came out. Perhaps it means that there are no too many progressive metal albums, which is like a, a joke, but it's a, it's a reality. That's for, that's for sure. That's yeah. for sure. Everybody's coming out with uh, yeah. power metal albums and things like yes. that. And but also, the progressive metal is something different, right now right like a uh, modern stuff like the gen stuff the or this stuff like um uh, polyphia and this kind of progressive it is progressive yeah, yeah it, it is, is progressive uh, way because, way yeah. way way different than tool when they first came out things like that definitely yeah yeah lyrically the uh the album is full of emotion, full of darkness, uh, full of hope. Um, the specific song, of course, was written for my, um, uh, my deceased uh, sister. And um, there was, a, there was, there was a, a cloud over my, my head uh, while I was writing the lyrics to this album. And that was basically it. Um, but it's not just focused on, on negative things in life. It... Uh, it, it delves into uh, uh, everything that everybody has been going through for such a long time. Uh, of course, it gets deeper into certain emotions and certain feelings, but um, that's, of course, the concept of, of the way Bob and I write our, our music. It has to do with, uh, with uh, dealing with very emotional and dark uh, parts of, uh, of life. Right. He's laughing. So, so he's laugh. He laughs at that question. Every this is the, the time. question. I'm afraid. Every it's the time. million dollar question. Yeah, it's the million dollar that we need in order to make <laughs> this story happen. That's <laughs> exactly yeah. right. Look, I would really love to do this. My first band called Retrospect back in 1997. So many years ago. We, we, we used to play covers from uh, Fate's Warning. We used to play this exact thing. So this. That's how I started getting into bands and stuff. So now it's, a, a, it, it's coming full circle and I should go out and do it live. But as I, I have explained, the, the, the cold reality of the thing is it costs a lot. It's, uh, it's, it's so difficult to do it. That's why I respect the bands that they still go out and do it. But I have to, I have to choose in which world I'm, I'm living. Like, that's why I, I step out of uh, Firewind 
because uh, I, I, you cannot be, you cannot wear the hat of a producer and then wear the, the other hat. And but because people, when when you go on tour, they're like, "Where is my album?" And when you make the album, you know, Gus was asking me, "Okay, let's go now for two months." Okay, I there is always this small uh, possibility that perhaps one day. You know, I get crazy and I'm like, okay, Billy, let's go to the rehearsal room and play Mark a Moment. As you can understand, Bob is trying to say that. It's simply um, too many things that are happening in his studio to, for him to take time off to actually look at the, the Vascachonis project as an actual um, touring band. Um, I've been asked the same question. I'm still getting from the first album this question. And I simply answered that the, the, the simple, the, the, the matter is uh, financial. It's definitely financial, and it has to do with uh, being able to support this um, if Bob has to leave his studio. It's and simple. also to make it look and sound good, because I've, I've played a lot of gigs in my life, I've done my tours, and I, I wouldn't like the music we do now to be presented on a lousy club, you know, with lousy that's right. stuff. That's, an that's another thing. It's got to be I, I something that's yeah. worth it, is what we're trying yeah. to say. So. Maybe in this life, maybe in the other. You never know. I, I always end up, uh, in the interviews that are given to me, this, uh, this specific question, I always end up writing the same thing. I always end up saying that, uh, like Bob is saying all the time, you never know, we, we never say never, uh, but for this to happen, maybe there's, a, there's an opportunity out there, some, some kind of uh, management, some kind of uh, huge label that uh, really believes in our, our material and maybe wants to invest in something like this. That's how I always close out this question. Okay, the Greek scene. And be nice. Try to be nice. See, I got him. I got to I got to tell him to be nice because I have can, to be nice. He can go on and on about our Greek scene here. Yes, because half of the Greek scene is related to me. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so be nice. <laughs> so look, uh, okay. half of the Greek scene is responsible. Yes, it's something like that. But uh, anyway, for you and you are responsible for it. Yes, but uh, in any case, it's. Um, I think we have the the highest ratio of bands. With population, you know, absolutely, it's, um, we produce a lot, a lot of yes. music, a lot of heavy metal comes out of Greece. There is a, I mean, in the program, in prog metal, we had a nice foundation since the nineties, the zeros, uh, power metal. We we have always Firewind. We have, uh, I mean, okay, there are the bands of like uh, Rotting Cry, Septic Flesh, and Suicidal Angels, um, great bands that they are among, you know. Top. Uh, the top in, in their genre and um, there are tons of good stuff I, 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 we can keep talking for hours for hours about the Greek metal scene yeah there it, are some wonderful people there uh, really talented uh, people um, I don't know uh, okay maybe there is um, for me there was a uh, there was a strange start in the 90s that um, the, the bands that were considered to be big Greek bands, mm -hmm. they were actually shitty, and they still are shitty. <laughs> I told you, be nice. Ah, sorry, <laughs> but this is the way that Greek metal was projected and received by the labels back That's then. That's true. You know, That's you true. get a, a, an email, you get an email or a letter with a CD, and it was shit. I mean, at the moment that we have uh, some bands in Greece in 1992, in America there was Images and Words. Right. There was Black the same, Album. The same year, yeah. The, yeah, yeah there was so... Things. Now we are up in the level. A lot but of European uh, magazines uh, are, are, yeah. are pointing out exactly what Bob is saying here, is that the Greek metal scene has risen um, to a level where a lot, a lot of uh, very major labels are looking at Greek bands and saying, you know what, this is something serious, they've gotten a lot better, and... Um, and of course the productions are a lot better, the music, the writing is a lot better, and it's producing, in general, something very, very quality. Yes. A good quality. After that, it has to do with um, what the band wants, if they, how far they want to go, how they're going to get to it. And of course there is always a geographical uh, handicap. That too. You know, we are in the, in the like, Low. bottom, yeah, bottom of uh, Europe, in order to get a... Um, 
you cannot get in a van like a band from uh, Switzerland or Germany and then tour the neighboring countries. So we have this kind of handicap. Uh, it's, it, it's hats off to the bands that they that still can and still do it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I've been there. I've done it, and now I'm, I, 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 I chose to help assist the bands. You know, make it out there and uh, give my best. And uh, it's it's very good that we also have great producers uh, producing bands and albums for um, labels of Germany, Finland. Sure. Yeah, like sure. 20 years ago, this was a joke. Like I'm gonna go to Greece. And it was a dream first. <laughs> yes. A dream, like, yeah. If a German band went to Greece and recorded an album, that would be a fucking joke. Yeah, that's. But anyway, I think we that we, me, Billy, and all the people, the metal people in Greece, we try to elevate this uh, the whole uh, scene. And uh, thank you to World of Metal for uh, supporting us as well. Make sure you check Cynical Silence.